I'm not sure if you all know what's going on in the world, but it seems pretty, um, pretty unsettling to say the least. And um, I mean, Ma uh, Lahaina is gone. I'm sure people may have heard about this small town of Lahaina in Maui, a little beautiful, little beautiful, beautiful little town is gone up in smoke. Maui's on fire. Maui doesn't catch fire. Maui doesn't catch fire. Anyway. So. Anyway, so a lot of weird things happening. And, and uh, I wanted to, uh, first of all, apologize to, to everyone for not being so available right now for my uh, for um, um, consults. And I know they're urgent. I just had an urgent one. Somebody on Instagram, your situation that you just explained to me on Instagram, um, uh, what they're doing is obviously doesn't work. You've already told me it doesn't work. It's not working. Okay. They, they, they this, 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 apparently this woman has a certain time, certain, certain type of fermenting cell in her in her lung area, and uh, they've used chemo, they've used everything they can, and it doesn't work. So therefore, it doesn't work. So wherever you are, until even if when we talk, I'm going to recommend we've got to find a place for you to get to. So we've got to get her into a condition where she cannot be in the hospital. So get her wherever she is, get her discharged from the hospital, and get her in, get her back to being healthy because you're not getting any value out of there. You already know that. You've just you've explained to me. You're not getting any value. So let's not pretend. There's no sense to pretend or to be afraid not to, to be afraid to leave because if they're not helping, if you know they're hurting, then there's no reason on staying. Okay, so um, get out of there. And then when I find when I finally can talk with you um, or, you know, or contact me sooner, we've got to find a place for her to go, whether it's to my, my clinic in Arizona, Oasis, or someplace closer to you it doesn't that that's not my i don't think about that i just think about getting her the help as, quick, as quickly as possible and, and sadly she's not going to get it from the allopaths she's not going to get it from allopathic medicine is that going to knock me off one of these stations i got to get uh, i need i gotta just stay on rumble i don't know why i'm on anything else i'm gonna get off i gotta get off of everything else um yeah, so Instagram, Rumble, website. So if you go to my website, it's live. LinkedIn, it's live. YouTube, it's live. And that's all um, uh, DR Thomas Lodi. Okay, so, all right. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, very good, you guys. Uh I'm going to I'm going to jump around here because there's questions from all over. What I want to apologize about is that I'm right now I'm so I'm I've been so I'm so busy that I can't get to um to all the answer, uh to the consultations right now. I just can't. I just don't I just sit literally cannot. I, I literally cannot. My 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 own uh, my own my ability to take care of myself is gone. I don't have time for myself. I don't even I don't even do anything for myself. So uh, that's how busy I am. So I, I, I'm 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 trying to to work that out. And it's only because I've committed to make doing these live lectures in in the United States and Bangkok, and I'll, which I will never do again. I'm gonna do live lectures. I mean, I'm gonna do a few in Arizona when I'm there. So if any of you are interested in coming to Arizona, uh, I'll let you know. There'll be a few while I'm there in the month of September. And, of course, we have questions and answers afterwards. However, um, <clears throat> other than that, and then I have to, I have my two obligations, but that's it. I'm done because I, I, can't, I can't work on that and, and take care of everybody, all you guys, which is really my priority at this point. And I'm opening a center here. I'm opening uh, two centers here. Uh, they're they're going to be fantastic, really fantastic, the best we've had. So um, I, you know, uh, but we're we're talking about February probably for the first one. So it's still a little while. 
Um, in the meanwhile, in the meantime, we've got to do what we all have to do, and that is live a life that results in health. Okay. There's no, there's no other way of doing it. Okay. So, um, okay. Now, who I want the I want to apologize to, to a person, a uh, man who may not be watching. His name is Wayne, and um, I sent him an email, and they did, and he may just be the tip of the iceberg, but he just said to me that uh, I didn't respond. Why didn't you respond to my uh, dead wife's? questions when she submitted them i didn't know i don't i get every week i get over 100 questions and i you know i only get to five or six or 10 20 sometimes i'm really lucky but I'm, i just never get to them all so if anyone has any suggestions for a better system maybe what i should do is take all the questions i have like this week take no new ones next week and until I'm finished, I'll use this week and next week to finish these. And then we take new sets of questions. I don't know. I got to figure that out. Someone's got to help me figure that out. What would be the worst? Because I mean, that about that ruined my night and day. He says she admired you and believed in you. And she goes, she says, he, he said, I think you're too busy to give patients good advice. So that's really a bummer. More than a bummer. So, um, there's no way to not do that. But I don't, um, I had met with her. I, had, I did give her a, a, a recommendation. I guess this was a, she had some other questions after that. I know I spoke to her after that a couple of times too. So I, I try to keep up with everybody all the time and I can't, I can't, I can't. It's worldwide. How can I? And I got email. I, it's just too much. So I, I do the best I can. And I really, I apologize. Uh, uh, anyway, well, I wanted to say that and, uh, um, and let you know that, uh, I'm, I need a new format, I guess. Um, but I want to, I take my focus off going, doing live lectures. Do any of you, do any of you know, um, let's see, do we, we can't do this now. Do any of you know uh, any good, uh, good, good medical doctors? Anybody know any good holistic or not even holistic, but people that are doctors that are done with allopathic medicine and want to get trained and learn and, and, and have a new career and actually really help people? If you do, please have them get in touch with me. Okay. Because that's what I'm working on. Um, okay, I think I can do this now. Are they going to let me? Come on, you guys. It's now 7.13, so it should be okay. So, and I'll be cool. I'm going to try to be cool today and not say anything that's offensive. Isn't, isn't it weird that I have to not say anything offensive? Because I don't know how else to talk. Because I mean, the problem is, you're, no matter what you say, you're going to offend someone, right? If you say something conservative, you offend people that are the other and if you say something that's the other then you can defend them so that's how i've always lived my life i live my life such that i just i just live and i i just who i am I, and plus i the other thing is i'm not a good actor you know i had an opportunity my mother was in the movie industry and i had an opportunity to be uh, uh, in the movies i mean i could have done that when i was young but oh, that's not what I want to do. I didn't want to act. And I lived in, I grew up in Hollywood, so I always saw people acting. My conclusion was, is that everybody was an actor. Everybody. I mean, I didn't know the difference. Remember, I was like, I couldn't talk. And so I, and I remember, so I was looking, so how do I know that this guy here is an actor and this guy is not? I mean, I didn't even think about that. Just to me, the world was a stage. And I, when I grew up and I read Shakespeare, the world is a stage. I said, yeah, definitely. Um, and so I, I know that. And the world's a stage. So. Anyway, but I'm not a good actor. In other words, I can't pretend like I'm, like I couldn't act. I couldn't play a role where I'm something that I'm not. And so just the same thing in social situations. 
I can't pretend. You know, I'm going to go give a talk now. They're saying, cut your hair. No, I uh, wear a tie, wear a tie. Squash your dreams in a neck tie. No, um, I won't do it. Um, anyway, that's just that. I, some of you can, and bl God bless you, you know, uh, but I don't. So anyway, so how am I going to talk without offending people? It's impossible, but I'm going to try to, okay, uh, until I can get on Rumble and I'm going to get this. Now, and, and if anybody knows anything about Rumble, let me know what I can do. I mean, can I make, uh, uh, what should I, I mean, it can't, it's not live, right? You can't have it live where I, I mean, um, where I can talk back and forth, where we can have a dialogue. See, what I really want to do is have a dialogue and be able to answer your questions right now in live time. Which I can't, because remember, I really have to follow um, what, what what I'm reading here. Um, so anyway, oh, can lupus can lupus be fixed without taking drugs? Lupus, okay. Well, lupus is, as you know, um, um, uh, it's all the the full name is called systemic lupus erythematosus (SLE), but for, they call it lupus for short, and it's just because there's this rash around someone's face many times when they first get it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the question is, can someone cure that? Well, first of all, we're going to get back to the whole situation that, where is Dr. John? Yeah, I, I want to say, I found it. Yeah, okay, so, um, Okay, well, first of all, remember, remember, none of us buy the story of, of autoimmune conditions, right? Um, I won't use the D word, but none, none of us buy that. Um, that's why we're here on this channel, because we, you know, the reason you're all here is because you've probably been there. You've probably been beaten up, torn up or you've watched a loved one destroyed, and you're here. There's no question why you want to be here. That's why, guys, please find me a doctor. I need to hire another doctor, two doctors, actually. So, uh, and I've got, and I'll train them. I will personally train them. So, I mean, so if you know if, if you know of anyone who's tired of working for the morgue, Tell them to call me, contact me at um, thomas at drloady.com. It's a good place. But actually, the best one is um, hello at drloady.com because that goes to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hello at drloady.com. Um, but that would be great. Um, also, you guys, if anybody knows, if anybody was interested in moving to Thailand, I have a uh, looking for a nutritionist. Um, who understands what I understand pretty much uh, or is willing to be trained, but she has to already, he or she has to already have be, um, uh, you know, trained, trained to some degree. All right. But that would be fantastic. Um, looking for a nutritionist who gets it, who understands it, who, who actually, who lives the lifestyle of eating, Uncooked plant food would be great. And we'll get into that someday. Again, again, and again. But anyway, let me talk about loop. Okay, well, okay. so so anyway, they, they, they call it autoimmune with a D, right? The D word. Autoimmune, meaning that the immune system somehow made a mistake and starts attacking the body. That doesn't happen. The immune system can't make a mistake. It doesn't make mistakes. All right? So... We, we've talked about in the past about, about immunity being divided up really into two, two, two basic areas that they, they call it. One is the Th1 response and the Th2 response. And this refers to the T, CD, CD4 cells or the, uh, what they also call as T cell helper cells, T helper cells. Those are the ones that are supposedly destroyed during an, quote, I, HIV infection, unquote. Um, which would be a big deal. You you get those and you've got you've done it. You, 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 the immune system's gone. Um, which is why we know where it came from. We all know where it came from. 
we all know where it came from. It didn't just appear out of Africa. No, no. Um, none of these things are just appearing out of Africa. And you know, the bizarre thing is, um, is that there, uh, if you look into it really carefully, if you're, I don't care if you're a biologist or not a biologist or a virologist, viruses don't fit any category of biology. They're just little editors. They run around editing DNA. That's what they do. So uh, if you have melanoma or any other kind of, of, of chronically fermenting cell, um, there is something called Rigvir, um, which is a oncolytic virus. Um, and they, uh, they run it through the uh, melanoma line long enough. So now it's after that melon it's after that that's what it's attracted to whatever it is and what i think it is it's a it's a, just an exosome an exosome is just simply um, a glycoprotein coat that comes off of the membrane just kind of budding out of, or inside forms inside the membrane or, or buds out through the membrane and it's got a little a little uh, uh rna or dna package in it and that's what it is and it's 50 50 nanometers 70 nanometers 100 nanometers, that's it. That's how big it is. And so the same as virus. And then no one can actually, no virologist, no, no one's ever seen it. With electron microscopes, you can see these things. Um, but yeah. But you can't take them and put them over onto some, somebody who doesn't have them. This is Cox postulates. You can't take these little things that you find and put them into someone's nose and they're going to get the same problem. It doesn't happen. It doesn't fulfill Cox postulates. Anyway, so um, so we've got basically the immune system is working from an inflammatory and an anti-inflammatory balance. We all things in nature are balanced by the yin, yin and yang. You know, day and night, up and down, front and back. All these things are. It's all binary. It's a it's a binary universe, um, and um, so. Um, um, you know, to whatever, uh, in fact, in fact, these things define each other, right? Up has no relevance or meaning if there's no down. Your front has no relevance or meaning if you don't have a back. You got that, right? So, all right. So anyway, with, with, uh, with immunity, we're talking about Th1 and Th2. So Th1 is the inflammatory response now what is inflammation bad no good no yes bad no yes got that the answer is is it good or bad the answer is yes meaning that everything that exists in its appropriate context is going to be helpful or the opposite so if you cut your finger or if you slam your finger and the, the door closes and your finger gets caught in the, in the door, you want inflammation. That inflammation is going to be red, hot, painful, and uh, swollen. That's the four cardinal signs that define uh, uh, inflammation. And that is how it's healing. So what's happening, the reason it's getting red, hot, swollen, and painful is that all of the the blood vessels and the capillaries are opening up. They're opening their pores and they're letting in more. They're bringing in more white blood cells and red blood cells. They're just getting in there and they're going to just go in there and take care of it. And, you know, like five days later, oh, it's gone. Oh, I can move again. Yeah, that's what you need. So that's TH1. TH1 is also, sees, sees uh, uh, anyway, so T, uh, and, okay. now TH2 is, turns it off. So, okay, we're done now. We're done now. If you don't get done now, you're going to keep going and there's nothing, and it's going to be, cause a problem. So you got to always have the on off switch, just like estrogen and progesterone. You got to have the on off switch. Um, and um, uh, everything has to have the on off switch, right? Yeah. Because it's got to be modulated. And you know, if you've ever tried to tune in uh, a, a radio or tune in something, 
you got to go back and forth. Right? It's not really easy to uh, it's harder to do with you know with one, but but that actually actually one is this way left and right, so you got you're modulating it. So anyway, you need to fine tune it, and that's what that's what it's all about. That's what estrogen and progesterone are all about, and that's why when women and men are concerned about any kinds of chronic chronically fermenting cells that can result from hormone. It's not the hormone. It's not a bad hormone. It's that, that they've gotten unbalanced and we have to restore balance, okay? Because they're, none of them are bad because they exist because they're necessary because that's how we stay alive. So there's not, it's not good or bad. Remember, the universe is not moral. It is not good or bad. It is absolutely necessary. Why is it necessary? Because it pleases God. I don't know of a better reason. Anyway, so TH2 could be called anti-inflammatory. TH1 could be called inflammatory. Now, they do other things. And in fact, TH2 will do some of the TH1 stuff, and TH1 will do some of the... It, it, it's way beyond comprehension. There's no, there's no way any human or any group of humans will ever get together and figure it out. We'll never be able to figure it out. It's way too complicated. Yeah, way too complicated. Oh, by the way, you guys, Facebook. Now they can read my mind. They can t if I if I'm if I if I'm talking to someone about uh, shoelaces. The uh, next thing I see, there's shoelaces ads coming up, but they can't seem to fix this. The fact is, we still don't have access to our Facebook. Still don't have access. Can't get on. And they're working as hard as they can. And they send me out. They send me out all these artificially, artificial intelligence letters. They don't even have the. In fact, none of the world does anymore. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that there's become a certain level of of communication that is considered I, I what is it considered polite appropriate I consider it offensive I consider it inhumane well, that's what it is uh but but it's so it's so nice it makes me want to vomit. Oh, we sincerely appreciate your. You know what I have to say that you don't sincerely appreciate. Uh, anyway, so just to let you know, we still don't have control of it, and uh, but they but the but 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 they can do, they can, they know what you're they they know what you're doing. So, getting back to your answer, and this is why I apologize again. Uh, Wayne, uh, and the reason I don't get to everybody's questions is because I get to what comes up and what comes up out of my mind, I'm going to assume is necessary for us all to hear. Okay. Cause I'm listening to me the same time you are. I don't know what's going to come out anyway. Uh, and by the way, that's true of all of you, unless you're giving a speech that's been, re that's that you've rehearsed. If you're just talking spontaneously, then you're listening and hearing it too. Anyway, so what I wanted to tell you is this. It's, it's, it's very, very important. Is that um, the, what, 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 what it used to be thought was with, auto, with autoimmune conditions is that organ-specific autoimmune conditions such as Sjogren's syndrome or, um, or multiple sclerosis, you know, where... It, it it eats up little hole little holes in in the uh, in the in the myelin sheath around uh, the nerves. You know, so the organ specific is was was a Th one dominant. In other words, it was hyper inflammatory. Whereas the systemic Y the ones were like were like lupus, uh, or like lupus. Oh, and and, and Sjogren's, yeah. That's what I meant. 
Sjogren. So Sjogren's and lupus, which are which are more more they involve more than one organ. They're more systemic. Yeah. I mean, so what would another another uh, organ specific would be irritable bowel syndrome, right? Is organ specific, right? And so that's usually Th1 dominant. The other one is Th2 dominant. And so the situation is, is you don't want to be dominant on that either. You want to restore the flexibility because what's been found out is very easily. Now, th and this is very important. To now, listen, this, this doesn't only apply to autoimmune. What this applies to, this applies to completely. Let me get this over here. This is crazy. What this applies to you guys is. Uh, What this applies to is immunity in general. So don't don't think of it as, you know, so so understand whenever we're talking about one, whenever we're answering one question, it's going to get, I'm going to make sure that it's applicable to all of us. Okay. Because it's all applicable to all of us. All right. So, you know, the balance between a TH1 and TH2 has to happen. Now, one of the major players in the immune system is called the macrophage. And the macrophage, in fact, they think they, you know, they, the biologists who uh, think about these things, think that probably the most primitive and original uh, immune cell in all of biology is the macrophage. And the macrophage just means large, macrophage means eat. It's a large eating machine, is what it is. It eats, it eats, it gobbles. Okay, so that's one way that uh, 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 immunity works. So, so, so the macrophage gobbles, uh, but the macrophage actually has more, many, many, many more. In, 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 in when you have a multicellular organism like us, has many, many more, uh, and even a unicell, uh, single cell organism has many, many more um, functions than just eating or phagocytizing. Okay, and um, Oh, by the way, TikTok, phagocytizing is a, is a nice word, okay? It's, a, it's actually, it's, it's spelled P-H-A-G-O-T-I-Z-I-N-G, -I -I okay? And it means any cell that eats, so neutrophil is a phagocyte, phagocyte. so it's a, um, a, uh, I don't know, a, a macrophage. Phagocyte. They eat, they consume, they eat, rather than produce a substance to, to kill and destroy, they eat. Okay. Now, in addition to eating the macrophage, um, it takes a piece of it, so so to speak, and presents it to the naive, in other words, the highly trained, ready-to-go T-cell that just came out of the University of Thymus and is ready to go but doesn't quite have a target yet. So the macrophage comes and shows to them, along with its brother, the, the dendritic cell. The dendritic cells do that too. The dendritic cells just a, uh, I don't know. There's some mild, weird differences between them, but they do the same thing. Basically, they're what they call antigen-presenting cells. All right, so anyway. So what it finds out is that, so there's also, so the macrophages can be in an M1 and an M2. And if they're an M1, then they're, uh, yeah, now tricks on. If they're M1, that means what they're busy doing is getting rid of, uh, they're helping. The, so, so when that macrophage shows up, to the whole tumor area and it gets into the micro it's got in there to get in there and, and chew up and do all the stuff that it does and, and it starts producing all of these cytokines these interleukins that call in the other guys and it's just it, and activate this and activate that ah, and immediately once it gets in there it gets into that low oxygen low acid environment of the tumor microenvironment and it gets turned into an m2 and the m2 is going to help the tumor grow so that's the problem with the tumor microenvironment that's the problem that's a big big problem with the tumor and i think that's the ultimate problem we run into when we get to a point with anybody where we can't go any further it's because we've gotten we uh we we, we can't change the uh, uh we've got to learn how to penetrate and get into that tumor microenvironment so that we can change otherwise everything that shows up is going to get turned over and so basically we lose the uh, we lose the um A bill, the, 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 the opportunity of having an immune system, you know? Now, uh, but, uh, what, 
heard I wanted to, when I found this and I wanted, I wanted to tell you about this. It's really, uh, it's really important. Um, so now, um, you know, w- one of the things, um, right. So again, SLE dominated by TH2. TH2 is going to produce cytokines and interleukins, which are chemicals that will, it's all anti-inflammatory, which prevents things that are there from being uh, eliminated and balanced. And so they start to accumulate, right? Because it doesn't allow for the inflammatory side to clean things up because you need a balance. All right. So that's what happens with that. So um, now there's a condition that, uh, what's it called again? It's called Uh, well, it's it's a situation where the mast cells get go get uh, ex- highly excited. Uh, I mean, when the macrophages get highly excited, and they go crazy, and uh, they cause major major problems. Okay, and this happens uh, in in many different kinds of situations where it can happen in sepsis. It can happen in uh, you know in uh, Sterile, sterile sepsis, what they call sterile sepsis. Um, it can happen in uh, anything. It happens in ICUs a lot. Um, and what it is, it get, you wind up getting the overproduction of, you know, IL-6 and TNF-alpha and all of these interleukins and cytokines, which are just chemicals produced by cells that stimulate, turn on the entire inflammatory cascade. So what happens with the, when, the, when you get this condition called MAS, uh, in, and you have an autoimmune condition, or if you have chronically fermenting cells and you get MAS, it, the macrophages are on fire and it's just, it, it eats you up. It, 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 Cause there's no, now the TH2 is really not able to come in there at all and turn off any of the fire. It's also what they call the cytokine storm. When, when, when they're, when, when, when they, when they're talking about the cytokine storm, as we we're talking about, they're talking about the inability to turn off the apparatus to kill and eliminate in the immune system. Now, for some reason, this happens a lot in kids with ju- a juvenile rheum- rheumatoid arthritis, things like that. But, you know, the more I learn, I got to say, I would really, really wish I could go back 150 years and study biology the way it was before. I don't know what's happened, what we've done. When I say we, I'm talking about those of us before for uh, two, two, two arms and two legs. I'm not sure if we're all human, but whatever. Uh, whatever we've done to biology has really made it We, 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 we just don't see these things in the jungle. We don't see these things in the forest. Now we are going to see it everywhere because it's happening everywhere. But I mean, prior to the intervention by the freaks, the freaks that are running this show, nothing got out of hand. It was all, it was all balanced. You know what happens when the sun goes down, the moon comes up or the moon doesn't come up, but it's dark for a while. And then it, and the sun comes up and then the moon and then the dark and the day, night, day, night. That's the way it goes. Oh, and it used to be that fires had to get that, that started because, uh, of a very unusual certain sort of sort of sort of circumstances had to happen or actually lightning strikes or something like that otherwise fires just didn't happen in the old days and there weren't just tidal waves and uh, 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 hurricanes and tornadoes the way there are now and weather you know we all know about HAARP and uh, we all know how that works uh, anyway I would love to have studied biology uh, back then. I think I'd like to live at least 300 years ago, 400 years ago. Maybe two or 3,000 years ago. I really don't in any way 
appreciate what's going on. And no way. No. That, no, no, no. What about this? No. What about, no. None of it. Life today is antagonistic to biology. Life today is antagonistic to nature. Life today... Uh, anyway. Anyway. So anyway, so that, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. You know, and, oh, and there's, you know what? It's really weird too. It's a lot of people. It's weird. Instagram keeps getting hacked, and then people take my picture and have me endorse products and 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 things. And uh, Facebook gets stolen. What's wrong? Come on, guys. Do something with your life. Don't, who, I'm, I'm not going to talk about 99.9999% of you. I'm talking about the, pit, the people who are doing this. Don't, have fun some other way. There's going to be another way of having fun besides making people frustrated. And depriving others of things. I mean... Anyway, anyway, so, um, so guess what you have to do to take care of if you get really sick from a, a systemic lupus erythematosus, you've got to go on corticosteroids and immune suppressant. Now, when I was in New York City, there was a Dr. Zhang, and it's called the Zhang Clinic, it's on 46th Street. And Dr. Zhang is still there, he's a Chinese uh, medicine. Doctor, traditional, obviously, came from China, traditional Chinese medicine, also trained in internal medicine, but never got his license in the U.S., so he just did botanical and acupuncture. And he only took care of a few, a, a few specific conditions, and one of them was autoimmune. So I had a woman come into my clinic way back around 2001, 2002. With day one or day two or three of full blown first time lupus with the big rash and and I got her blood test and it was it was everywhere you know when lupus can go to the heart can go to the kidneys can go all over the place go to the brain it can cause all kinds of problems so you immediately put someone like that on cortical steroids and things like that I called Dr Zhang we got down there got her this stuff and I'm telling you within 48 hours it was gone. So I don't know what it was because he he showed me the botanical stuff and he showed me actually the biochemistry of the of the of the, uh, the with the molecular structure of what's in those plants, but again it's you know I don't know what it did in the body, but uh, his phone number is nine one four two five nine zero three four six nine one four two five nine zero three four six at 210 East 46th Street in um, New York City. Dr. Zhang, amazing. It doesn't take do everything. You gotta find out, it's like only five or six conditions he works with, but he takes care of them. But now, guess what, guess what else he's done? Guess what the researchers have found? Well, it turns out that you're gonna love this one. Can I say this online? Hydroxychloroquine, no, hydroxychloroquine actually, um, kind of decreases this stuff. Why? Because it decreases the production of IL-6 and it decreases the production of TNF-alpha and also the what they call toll-like receptors. And then there are these other receptors that are on macrophages, uh, dendritic cells, T cells and things like that, that if they get bound, if the right thing binds to them, it turns off that process and calms it all down. And that's something that's called indole 3 carbonyl. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Where does that come from? Does not come from my steak. It does not come from my pork. I got removed again.
we are committed to making sure that any personal information shared that doesn't leave the harm. Anyway, it doesn't come from pork or anything like that. It comes from broccoli. Indo-3 carbonyl is... Okay, took, TikTok took me off again. I'm, I don't know what I said. Uh, so Indo-3 carbonyl actually comes from... Uh, we talked about it before. If you eat uh, any cruciferous vegetable like broccoli or uh, cauliflower or uh, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, stuff like that, it's got these uh, glufurofenins, which get turned into indo-3 carbonyls. And when that indo-3 carbonyl gets into your uh, stomach acid, it turns it into indo-3 carbonyl. Now, why would they take me off? Did I... Did I? What did I say? Unbelievable. So anyway, that's something good to know is that the uh, the cruciferous vegetables can actually decrease the entire powerful inflammatory, uh, the, the the dangerous kind. It doesn't get rid of it completely, so that it's no longer you no longer have it. Now, one of the other things about the uh, and I'm going to get back to the tumor microenvironment because it's very very important. Is uh, what has been found is that it's actually not. It's actually full of microorganisms. So I think it's one in every 47 or every 147 uh, chronically fermenting cells is a uh, a microorganism. And maybe the doc information, I shouldn't have given his name. I don't know, you guys. I guess I got to do something else with my life. This, I certainly can't, can't do what I'm doing. Nothing, I get kicked off. It's very, it's a bummer. Anyway, that's what the Indo-3 carbonyl does. So, anyway, what it turns out is that the patterns of uh, micro microorganisms that are in the tumor microenvironment seem to be similar so for breast ones that are in breasts versus ones that are in colons versus ones that are in pancreas versus ovaries for with skin wherever they are the tumor microenvironment in there seems to be uh, uh, have different uh, 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 ratios and kinds of bacteria microorganisms you know bacteria archaea um, and uh, so that's why they have done, you know, and especially with um, uh, with colon uh, chronically fermenting cells that are in colons. Um, but with, even with even with breast, they've done fecal implants. They take the, the fecal matter from somewhere else and plant, implant it, and it works. It helps them. Um, so by you know, because that, then the, these healthy bacteria can get over to the tumor microenvironment and kind of crowd out the other guys. And so it all comes down to really, again, is restoring balance and getting what they call prebiotics. Prebiotics are the food that bacteria eat or that microorganisms eat. Uh, and then the microorganism, there is, uh, you know, you, we need a certain kind was that you need a certain number of bacteria it's no sense to try to memorize all the names but um you know you, you need to get at least 40 species together and you need a lot of them to get them in and can take them a lot and then you got to make sure you're eating the food that they will eat to stay alive and, and otherwise they won't be able to colonize All right, so anyway, that was um, 
I, I just thought that was uh, quite relevant. So I think I think in terms of what we need to do, and we it, I, and it might be the what they call the last frontier of um, working with um, chronically fermenting cells, and that is we've got to get back to we've got to focus our time. Now, one of the reasons we get rid of parasites, and one of the reasons we want to take care of, and and, and is the same reason is one of the same reasons we want to take care of any dental cavitations or things like that. Why? Because they actually disturb the, the natural oral flora, nasal flora, and then if it's uh, and then parasites can destroy the uh, intestinal flora, whether it's small intestines, large intestines. All right. So um, because they're remember they're all the same size, they're micro microscopic. And so they're going to get in there and do the same thing. Uh, they're going to, you know, some of the bad guys are that, that are that are. I mean, bad guys. Some of the ones that are not in our best interest are going to have, have an opportunity to to to, uh, to grow unless we put in the guys that we want. You understand? And remember, they can do this better than we can. So we got to just flood ourselves with that. But I think that's another way of realizing how important we don't even realize how, you know, when you see what they do, uh, I mean, I mean, one of the ways in which parasites are actually able to cause problems in people is that they produce a substances that disrupt our immune system. Yeah. So that you know that uh, so we've got to get the good guys in there, and the only way you can get them in is not like you can you can find each tumor and then inject the bacteria into them. You've got to just start eating, taking probiotics, and take and taking and if you and eat right and take prebiotics, which is usually inulin and some other stuff, but. Um, Stuff like that. Okay, so let's see. Let's see our next question. I asked you to talk about a new Zoom policies. Mm, I don't, uh, uh, Christy, I, I I don't I don't know of any new Zoom policies. I did I say that? Maybe I was talking about something else. But anyway. Uh, Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, the Rumble channel. I know we're on, so I know we can get on. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to stream on there, because eventually um, Instagram and um, TikTok and uh, Facebook are uh, not going to be anymore. Now. Anyway, thank you so much, Christy. Thank you. Monica, um, my, onco my oncologist recommended to do a full stomach and lymph node reduction operation. PET scan and biopsy haven't shown, shown cancer. But my oncologist says that these scans cannot show small cells. What do you think? I think your oncologist I don't even have a word for him but her him or her uh, am I understanding this right they haven't seen anything but they're sure they're there and so they want to take it out wait a minute Reduction operation, man. They want to get rid of. They want to take care, get rid of your lymph nodes around. Okay, no. The answer, I say no, and I'll talk to any oncologist about it. And I want that oncologist to please show me the data. The lymph nodes, remember everybody, lymph nodes are where the immune system makes its decisions. Okay, that's where the tight, that's where the T cells get run into the dendritic cells and macrophages and get told 
what's going on and they mount an immune response. Okay, without without lymph nodes, there's no place for these guys to get together and and to come up with an immune response. I can't I I I I, I can't really understand what they were trying to say. Uh I knew about tapeworms and I never heard of parasites inside the body. What is the difference? There's many kinds, many kinds. You all know about parasites. There's there's worms and there's uh, protozoa. Worms are different kinds. I mean, tapeworms are one kind and then there's um, uh, round worms, flat worms, um, pin worms, and... Uh, some are microscopic, most of them are microscopic, but they get larger and larger. They can get up, you know, tapeworms can get long. The other one can't, uh, don't, they're, they're still very small. Um, and there are little flat worms that are called flukes and they live in the blood and they can go into the liver and they go into the, and they cause uh, cholangiocarcinoma, which is uh, chronically fermenting cells of the bile ducts. Um, and then there are, Yeah, many kinds of worms. And then the protozoa are giardia. You've heard of giardia, uh, entamoeba, amoeba, amoebic dysentery. Uh, Trichomonas vaginalis. You heard of that? That's a parasite. Um, there, uh, Babesia. Uh, yeah, malaria. These are all, these are protozoal. They're one celled organisms that get into our cells. They, they have to live inside of a cell. And they do, but the worms migrate. So you have a worm, you have some worms in your pancreas, uh, in your in your in your in your spleen, and you take some herbal medicine, herbal stuff, and all that does is shake them up, and they migrate to a place they're looking for a safer place, and they go down into your pancreas, and they settle there. You don't want that to happen because that's not a place you want to get inflamed chronically and anything to happen there. So you don't want them to migrate. You want to get rid of parasites. You want to get rid of. And you got to hit them hard because remember they lay up to 2000 eggs a day and most of the stuff we take kills uh, the adults rather than the worms so the worms are still running around i mean so are the eggs rather than the way eggs so the eggs are still there no okay there are if 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 you're an oncologist, I don't know what's going on with you, Monica. I don't know what kind of situation you had, um, but we don't want to take out any lymph nodes, especially if you can't find them. Um, and uh, you don't go in there, you don't get exploratory sur surgery for many many reasons, right? Many many reasons. You suppress the immune system. You uh, completely de intoxi intoxicate the body when you take them. Um, uh, when you get a full-blown anesthesia. So you definitely don't want that. Uh, so, yeah, no, no, there's whatever has happened to you so far, consider it enough and let's get you into it with a group with a doctor that can help you heal and heal from this chronically fermenting condition rather than try go to war against it anymore. There's no war. And also surgery just doesn't work. I mean, it, it works under some circumstances. I, and I always, people always say, well, surgery, cure. okay. It works under very rare circumstances. And I'm not saying this by myself. It's not just me. I'm talking, I know surgeons. I know people. I talk to people. My patient, I have two patients that are oncological surgeons. So this is not stuff I'm making up. And, it's, and, and, and the surgical literature shows you as well. So anyway, surgery. If you have to get surgery, you, you get it. You have to. There are situations where you absolutely have to. Yeah. But yours is not one of them at all. So what, what you need to do is uh, 
Uh, we need to get in touch, Monica. Come on. Can you speak to why I have lost my smell and taste since November of 2020? It happened after I had a cold and these two senses were never restored. I have not taken medical intervention. That has been promoted for the last two and a half years. Hmm. Well, you know, the, okay. Smell, smell is kind of like the original sense. I think it's the first sense. It's kind of like a lot, a lot of extremely primitive organ, organ, organisms only have a sense of smell. That's how they get around. That's how they discern what's in the environment. Um, and, um, yeah. And it's a very important, important part of our, our, our brain too. It's kind of like, um, yeah, if you know something, if you if you're good at doing something, then you say, yeah, he has a nose for these things. So anyway, but um, both uh, both um, smell and taste are uh, are easily uh, modified by external situations. Being exposed to um, to noxious stimuli, uh, poisonous type of stimuli, they do that. Yeah. Uh, getting co a cold, people to get cold, catch a cold. That's, I'm using the term catch a cold, but they're getting, they have a cold or they have what they call the flu and things like that. They're, 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 uh, they're olfaction and gustation go down a little bit. Yeah. And, and it usually recovers after a little while. Um, but you know, it can happen from head injury. It can happen. The other thing is it happens from dental problems. There can be hidden dental problems that you're not aware of. And you've got to go to a biological dentist. And you're, if you're in uh, LA, go to Emma Abramian. Um, and that's, I might as well, I might as well, let, 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 let. anyway, she's amazing and amazing. And you'll, uh, you'll see that. Um, but if not, you got to find, uh, um, if you're not in that area and you want to go somewhere else, find a biological dentist who belongs to an international association of, international association of, Biological dentist, I, I, I O A M B or something like that. Medical, but and I'm not sure what it stands for or what it is. But um, and make sure they don't put in like someone told me the other day. My dentist, my dentist says he puts in safe root canals. There are no safe root canals. It's taxidermy. You're putting dead teeth into the gun, into the bone, which goes into the mouth. You remove the more you. Remove, remove the blood vessels and you remove the um, nerves and you fill it up with cement and then you put a crown on it. Now, all the bacteria and other microorganisms have gone in and they actually build up a little cave in the bone above or below where the root was. And it's called the cavitation. And in there, they produce things called biotoxins, right? And there's no immune system to police them. So they're, they're out of control. And they run along meridians that connect to our organs. Okay, so there is no safe. And if they're telling you that, then they're not a biological dentist. Please understand that. One way you can tell if someone is a biological dentist, you look at their website and you look under services. And if under services, they say that they do root canals, then they're not. You don't do a root canal. And you don't put in metal amalgams if they do that then they're not it's it's not it's nice like saying there's these, these here smoke these these are safe cigarettes or uh i don't know can't even think of another analogy that's a good one anyway with taste and smell um now, remember, the other thing, so check, you got to check out dental. Dental is a big deal, okay? I don't know if you've been, you were exposed to any kind of radiation or anything like that. Uh, it can do it. Of course, cigarette smoking can, can change it, but it usually comes back. Uh, cocaine can change, you know, snorting a lot of cocaine can change it, and then uh, it comes back. 
usually if the person stops in time. Um, but as I said, head injury. And the other one is hormone. Hormones can do it. And it's interesting that menopause with the reductions in estrogen and progesterone both can result in decreased smell. Because they are, estrogens are actually necessary to regenerate taste buds and regenerate uh, uh, the cells of the nose. So when estrogens are low, that gets that regeneration is slower and you wind up with a, a net decline. Yeah. And then there are other, uh, you know, there are other things. Some people get a decreased sense of smell and taste. Some people get an increased or where it's where things are, are like too sensitive. And, and you can get that from, from androgens. You can get that from testosterone and um, androstene dione and things like that. Uh, and women with uh, PCOS can, can experience that kind of thing. Um, and both thyroid, uh, both hypo and hyperthyroidism can affect smell and taste. Uh, so you, you've got to do those. And the way I recommend to check uh, 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 thyroid is get a thermometer and check your axillary morning before you get out of bed temperature. And um, write it down five, you know, in the morning and write it down five times. And if you're less than 97.8 Fahrenheit or 36.8 centigrade, then you are hypothyroid. And then you're probably going to want to get a natural thyroid, such as Armour, such as Thyrovant, such as Westroid. There's many of them. But you want to get one, but you also want to start taking iodine because there's not enough iodine in our food systems, and we don't have enough iodine. So, yeah. Um, but it's very, it's very, uh, so elevated androgens, again, they can lead to uh, uh, the same as a decrease in, uh, in, in, uh, in estrogens and progesterone. Can, they can lead to smell, uh, problems with smell and, and taste. So you need to get all of those checked out. There's a lot of things to check out. Okay, um, and, 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 and the average ENT doctor is not going to know that. I see you have, don't have consultations until October. My brother is 50 years old and is following his conventional doctor's treatment plan for his right tonsillar neoplasm. That means chronically fermenting cell. The recommendation is cisplatin once a week for six weeks and radiation five days a week. Until October 2nd, he is open to eating clean and possibly receiving vitamin C's. What do you think if he goes this route? He lives in Washington, D.C. area. What do you recommend anyone there? His oncologist says it's a success will depend on the mindset and diet, but says there is no research on vitamin C helping. Is that true? Oh, my God. I wish this was a Zoom so I could show you. You go to, I said, I, I got to do this. All right, let me just take a look. I can't, I, oh, I, I can't, but they're still saying things like that. Let me see this here. Okay, here's one. Uh, we're going to go to PubMed. And we're going to put in intravenous vitamin. C and cancer. And we have several thousand articles. Seven thousand or several thousand articles. There had now tell this person that told you this that as a matter of fact as a matter of fact not only the NCI the National National Cancer Institute the uh, FDA and the um, NIH 
got together with the, under the under the under uh, with the leadership of uh, Mark Levine at the NIH, and they did some studies on vitamin C and how it works. What is the mechanism of action? How does it actually work against cancer? Uh, and he found out, and they did they published I think a series of four papers. This was in the early 2000s. After that, uh, a doctor named Julie, Julie Jusko at um, or Nebraska, one of those, either Nebraska or Oklahoma. University, anyway, it was a university-based uh, trial with, with ovarian cancer and um, vitamin C. Okay, that was one trial. And then there's been other many trials since that time. So it's been, it's, they're, 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 they've had clinical trials, live clinical trials. There's published research. There's been, it's been going on for decades. So please tell your doctor that that's just simply not true, that vitamin C would work. And your oncologist just doesn't know about it. And he should at least have the respect for the field that we're in to not say that something's not research if it is research. I wouldn't, it's like I wouldn't say, well, they've never done any research on chemo. They have. They've done a lot. I'm not going to say they didn't, but read it and you'll see what I you'll see what I mean. So, do I think he can be helped? I definitely, definitely do. I know that cisplatin. Look, I'll find you an article right now. Cisplatin will make cancer metastasize. It will make it spread. You know, you look up. Uh, go, go, go. Look up a. Um, look at. There's a. There's a. There's a. There's a, an article called The Paradoxical Effects of Chemotherapy on Tumor. Uh, toll like four signaling. The Paradoxical Effects of Chemotherapy and yeah. And then here's the one with taxotier causing Taxotere and uh, not uh, you you said was it tax hall? They want to put them on. Yeah, cisplatin. Okay, they want to put them on cisplatin. Okay, so what what I'm just gonna say is that go 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 get um um. Paradoxical effects of it, and then here it is. Well, here's here's one here's one article here you, you can. Uh, oh, I can't go to it because it'll, it'll knock me out here. But it's one article here. It's called it has the paclitaxel and prostate cancer, but they just tested tested prostate cancer. But prostate and breast cancer are very similar. Um, but look at that. Look at the paradoxical effect, and you'll see that cisplatin actually does increase um, metastasis. They all do. Most of them do. They all do. And so does radiotherapy. So, yeah, I don't think he needs to do that. I think what he needs to do is see someone that is going to, who's read a little more, who knows a little more, who's ready to give him a better opinion. He needs, he needs a true second opinion. I'd be really happy to talk to your oncologist, and I'd be really happy to talk to you with them. Um, yeah. At, you can find me on drlody.com. I'm happy to talk to them, discuss the research with them and all that stuff. And, uh, but we need to find somebody. He's not going to change his mind. He's not going to. It doesn't matter. If you show them everything, they're still not going to change their mind. Okay, so I lost my, I lost my health after taking some Botox dis, Dysport injections. The last Dysport injection back in 2017 nearly killed me. I haven't been able to get regain my health in spite of being, seeing 40 doctors, 40-plus 40 doctors. I've been diagnosed with chronic slimes. And treated clinically for Bortonella and Babesia. I also have parasites. Well, Carol, I need to see. I can't just go from that. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, you have Babesia. Babesia is a parasite. It's an. It's like a malaria. It's, it lives in. Um, it lives in red blood cells and uh, called babesiosis. Um, it usually accompanies limes because it's carried by a tick 
just like limes is limes is carried by a tick um and um and the same with uh bortonella so where is it where is your stuff where is it? Yeah, so it's Bortonella. And so then you think you've also got worms. I'm sure you do. So you really need a really powerful uh, parasite cleanse right now. It's very, very important. I mean, essential. Essential. That's got to be number one. We'll do that first. Then once they're cleaned out, then we've got to take a look at, at your dental situation. We've got to find a biological dentist. But let's get let's get those parasites out first, especially if you know they're there. Um, it's very important. Now, there are different kinds of... Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, I don't like drugs. I hate drugs. I don't give drugs out. That's not my goal is to get off drugs. My goal is to teach people to that's how that's how to restore our health. But there are certain situations where we have to use drugs. One of them is parasites, because if we don't, they're going to we're going to under treat them and they're going to migrate and they're going to stay in our bodies. And it's not, you know, we just can't, you know, instead of going through this year after year after year after year, let's get it over with. OK, so that's what we've got to use these these drugs, these heavy drugs. You know, and um, <clears throat> and I've gone through it before. You know, these are drugs are praziquantel, niclosamide, uh, uh, ivermectin, fenbendazole, medbendazole. Um, uh, and then there are ones that are going to, th th those are all for worms. And then there's one, ones we want to get for the protozoa, so like nidazoxanide, and uh, also called the linea. And uh, another one is called uh, oh, actually there's several. And, and and strangely enough, some of the uh, things that we think of as antibiotics, like um, um, doxycycline, tetracycline, actually are used with a lot of uh, with a lot of um, um, single-celled protozoal parasites and the reason they are is because the uh and especially now remember there's the tetracycline family has tetracycline doxycycline and minocycline those are the three main there are a lot because it comes from this uh organism in the in the in the soil but i think it was called uh Chlor, chlor tetracycline, I don't know what it was called. But anyway, the thing about them is that they get into the cell and they get they get intracellular uh, organisms. So they're really they're good in things like uh, like uh, uh, you know malaria, mycoplasm, uh, you, know, uh, you know, and then spirochetes is good for spirochetes. Like limes is a spirochete. Spirochete just means it's a bacteria that has a screw-like shape, and it gets into things. So syphilis is a spirochete, limes is a spirochete. Um, but, they, you know, they go inside cells. Uh, so anyway, so same, something like minocycline, tetracycline, dicycline. Uh, and, uh, and, then, and then there's another drug that's, that's really, really good in these situations for the protozoals, and that is uh, Bactrim. Tri trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Uh, but normally I don't prescribe drugs, just that this is the situation where you do it. Now, here's our dilemma. And this is a big dilemma, everybody, really. And it's something that we have to just like say, okay, we got to figure out, well, we're just going to do it. And then, and then we're going to kill off the good guys in our belly. We're going to kill off the good guys. And, and that's going to make things worse. So how do we do this? How do we get rid of the parasites and not get rid of the healthy bacteria? Well, it's impossible. So the only thing we can do is to take many, many, just keep take just, just as many as we can in probiotics, prebiotics, and take them rectally. You can put them in rectally when you go to sleep. Uh, vaginal for your woman. Uh, there's even oral, oral probiotics you can put in your mouth at night when you go to sleep. Um, we've got to bring, restore the, uh, we've got to maintain that while we're trying to kill off these, these guys, because if we don't get, yeah. Now, 
once they've like once they're in us and they've gotten they take it they they've pretty much hijacked our physiology i don't think there's another way fasting would probably do it although you know a lot of them like these blood flukes and stuff are living in blood vessels and they're and they're like malaria is in our red blood cells Babesia is in our red blood cells they're eating the hemo <clears throat> eating the hemoglobin so you know even if we're not eating if we're fasting we still our body still got to be making its own cells so but I think it might reset our physiology enough so that we can elim eliminate that. If somebody said, look, I'm not, I don't really want to uh, take any drugs. Okay, if you got a lot of parasites or, you, or, or we find out that parasites are a thing, um, it's gonna take years of, or a really like a, a couple of really long, prolonged, supervised 40, 30, 40, 50 day fasts and then eating a certain way in between. It's going to take a really, really powerful effort. Uh, it'd be, I think I would recommend killing the parasites first, doing the dental, make sure there's no other hidden dental infections that are fueling this thing, that are keeping it all going, and then uh, uh, do fasting and cleansing and clean things up. But I just get, get rid of the... Because it's almost like if you don't... Suppose I had a... Suppose I had a uh, a, uh, a cavitation here in my jaw and it was it had all kinds of organisms in it and it was fueling all this no matter what i did fasting and cleansing it's still fueling it i, I don't know how long it would take uh, i don't know if i would die first or it would die from fasting i mean i don't know that's what i'm saying that's why I, I think if we can get rid of those fundamental causes, detoxify, cleanse, get and then, you know, detoxify means get rid of the guys that we can get rid of. You see them, get rid of them. Or if you know they're there in any way. Now, one thing you might do, though, is you might go to see Dr. Uh, no, I can't be in trouble for that because I've sent people before. Go to see Dr. Yu, Simon Yu in St. Louis. Um He'll do an acupuncture meridian test, and he'll find out exactly what's going on with you and exactly what um, um, the, the remedy is. You know, you know, is it parasites? Is it dental? Is it environmental toxins? Is it th so those are things that are in there. And which order should we should we go at it? Should we do this one first, second, third? Or third? You know, usually, usually. Do the office hand. You go for dental evaluation by a holistic, by a biological dentist, or you see Doctor Yu and he'll tell you whether it's dental or not. Yes or no. Simple. Um, and or you can just you can come to us too. You know that. Um, not like him. Nobody's like him. He's the he's the man. Go see Doctor Yu. Um, so while you're doing that, you start a parasite cleanse. Because you can't, unfortunately, you can't diagnose them. You're not going to find them in your stool. And I saw some comments there. Someone said, "Someone said they, they you know, why?" Uh, oh, I remember the thing. Someone said to me, "I mean, someone said there was a comment on here. It was really a, a, an interesting comment." It said, "Well, you know what? If there's, if there's no, uh, why didn't God give us a way?" to keep our colons clean without colonics. You know, why wasn't, why, why isn't there a mechanism for that? And he did. He, God did. If we'd eat right, if we ate human food, we wouldn't have no need for colonics. If we grew up eating human food, we grow, we grow up eating non-human food, and we live in a situation that is not natural so that we don't, like you're in a, you're in a board meeting or you're, in a, you're at work, 
and you got to go to the bathroom. You just can't go right now because of whatever, or you're on a date, or whatever it is, you can't go out. You can't go to the bathroom. You don't. You hold it in, and then you kind of offset that urge. And now that does, you know, so you do that. Um, and we don't eat enough, drink enough water. We're not hydrated. We don't. Uh, we just don't eat right. We don't eat the food the humans need to keep that. Remember, we have 30 feet of intestines or 10 meters. That's a lot of intestines. It's a lot of revolutions going around, and it's got to be cleaned out. And the only thing that really cleans it out well is plant food. I have no idea what TikTok got upset about. Uh, no idea. Xenia, I see, says ALK, ALK, plus stage four or five years. I don't really know what that means. Oh, ALK, what does that mean? What, why I am not. Why, why, why I am not going regular despite eating healthy. Yeah, we talked last time, right? Remember, you, was despite eating healthy, you had cholestasis during your two pregnancies in 2009, 2013. You developed cholestasis. Uh, if you're health, if you're if you're eating healthy, I'm not not sure. Not everybody has the same definition of what that means. But if you're eating healthy, that means you're eating plant food. It's not cooked. Uh, let's say 90, 80, 90 percent of it is not cooked. Okay, and the and that that which is cooked is not grilled, baked, broiled, or grilled, fried. So you can steam it or boil it. But and then and then but most of it is not that way. That would be eating healthy, and you're getting a lot of fat stuff up. You're drinking a ton of water. Uh, you shouldn't be getting that. And I'm not. And I think you got the cholestasis. Cholestasis is just because things got you got. Your equilibrium got out of balance. That, that's all. Just your equilibrium got out of balance. Your water equilibrium. Water in one department. Not in another. I have been getting mammograms since I was 29. I will be 60 in three months. I have dense breasts. My father's sister had breast cancer. My dot. My GYN retired now. GYN wants a mammogram and ultrasound. I asked to just do ultrasound, and she said no. Where to go about finding a doctor who will listen? Don't get just you, you just you, you go find out. You just don't do. You don't need a mammogram. So you're, someone had it. It doesn't mean it's not. Are you eating right? Are you living right? Are you making sure that you're not growing and making chronically fermenting cells? Are you living that way? How are you? Are you just gonna? Then what? What if they say yeah, that is there? They're gonna, Cut it off and do chemo. I, I, I don't. There's not enough context to this question. I really want to answer you because I know you want an answer. But if you've been doing mammograms since you're 29, you're 60. That is a big, big, big mistake. And I know there's someone out there who said to me, "I'm an ultrasonographer, and I'll tell you, oh, mammograms are still good." Yeah, well then you get your mammograms for yourself. Okay, you give yourself a mammogram. Mammogram is irradiating breast tissue. And if you don't know if it's not good, then I, I, there's nothing I can say. But don't know it. Continue not to know it. All right? So I would say get an ultrasound and get a thermogram. There are doctors that will do that in their office for you, in your off, in their office for you. You don't have to go into the house of horrors, okay? You can go in, in your office for you. Uh, they'll do it in your office for you. You got to find, you can find, got, I don't know where you are, uh, uh, Karen, but there are doctors that do that. I know that do that. I and mean, we have an ultrasound and we do uh, things like that. And we have a, and then there are a lot of doctors who have really good thermograms. There's a really amazing thermogram that says a whole body thermogram now. Really, really amazing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you don't, and you don't want to. So don't worry about that. And just li and live right. Start. I hope you're living right. Hope you're eating right. Going to bed early. Uh, I'm recently diagnosed with poorly differentiated carcinoma. Triple negative. 
I'm taking low dose naltrexone, modified citrus pectin, mistletoe, zinc, and antioxidants. Also, twice weekly high dose vitamin C with our test and eight infusion. My holistic doctor has advised the ketogenic diet and working with a metabolic approach advocate doc the nasha winter program my detoxification protocols include daily coffee enemas once a month alternating liver flush clean sweet and citrus detox do you have any input on my treatment plan well you know i what, what i i just don't know what you mean uh vanessa How much how much any what antioxidants you're taking and how much so i would just what i would do is make sure that you're taking adequate amounts of everything you're getting your colon clean twice a week with a colon hydrotherapist you're having a uh, lymphatic therapy by a certified lymphatic therapist using electro electro uh lymphatic electro lymphatic therapy elt as well as manual uh make sure that you're getting mo movement all day long Every 90 days, you get up, every 90 minutes, you get up and do something um, for 15 minutes um, where you get out of breath. You work really hard and ch keep your, your blood flowing, get some resistance, keep your strength up, um, you know, whether it's push ups and stuff like that. Um, go to bed early. Um, if you're getting your vitamin C, good. You should be taking vitamin C every day, eight to 10 grams, in, uh, like I do, about, like I, uh, I've said before, eight to 10 grams in. Uh, a liter of water or shake it up just take a sip from 7 a.m to 7 p.m so you're getting a little bit of all day long and then throughout the day you can also take here and there take a, um, a liposomal my um, vitamin c because that goes in through another through, through the lymphatics so you'll get you'll have a good adequate amounts of for physiological requirements for vitamin c because when vitamin c is acting physiologically it does all sorts of things like turns off uh, hif1 alpha and does some epigenetic changes to our to, to cells that are chronically fermenting so just at physiological doses not we're not even talking about getting up to therapeutic from the iv and also when you finally sit down to get the iv it will go up to therapeutic more easily because you've already it's already you there's no hole to fill up yet uh do i have a list of biological dentists? no you know what i'm gonna put that up i'm, I'm gonna put it up i'm gonna I, I'll, I'll put that up i promise because I got a list from somebody who I trust, uh, from uh, Dr. Emma. Um, I'm just looking at all these questions that are coming up. Can children under six and under be treated safely and effectively for parasites? Yeah, but for them, you can be much, much less, much, much less. Uh, and I, you know, I'm sorry to say, but I have I've not worked with children because the law doesn't allow it. So I don't have a lot of experience working with children. That we we tried to work with uh, children early on, and uh, if someone came to us, the authorities took the child away from the parents. So we couldn't work. We can't work with them, and they you know they forced the child to go to. But but you're talking about something else with parasites. So I but I don't know. I'm sure that a child could be easily be given herbs. It doesn't need to be taking any drugs. Maybe, you know, small doses of ivermectin would be good in small doses. And I don't know what small would be. I don't know how much they weigh or anything like that. Um, but I don't think, but I think herbs would probably do it. Maybe a little bit of ivermectin, maybe a little bit of fembendazole. Little bits. I don't know what little bit would be. I just don't know the answer to that specifically. But regarding the herbs, they could take the clove. They could take the garlic. They could take the um, uh, uh, oil of oregano. There are herbs that get rid of parasites as well um approach advocate dr nasha winter program i don't really know her program Okay, so uh, here, uh, have sore spot on right front rib, front right rib, 
because of blobular in 2004, again in 2019, had double mastectomy in 2019, no other treatment, stage one. In 2004, you had chemo and radiation. I've been healing with plant diet and addressing nutritional deficiencies under naturopathic care. Without breast, there's no screening, so every pain is nerve-wracking. Especially, should I ask for an MRI thermography? Thank you so much. All right, Roseanne. Roseanne. Um, the most important thing you said there is nerve-wracking. means you're afraid. And if you're afraid, then your immune system is being suppressed. You've got to learn to, to meditate, to turn off your mind. Turning off the mind is very, uh, uh, it, it's not something you can just do. You have to work at it. So five, five times a day for just two minutes, back up straight, sitting back. So if you want to say a prayer, say a prayer first. And then listen with all of your being very quietly and intimately to your breathing in and out. You won't be able to stay focused. Your mind will fly away, but bring it back. It'll fly away, but bring it back. Just two minutes. Do this five times a day. Get good at it until any. You, 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 whenever your mind goes to that place, you immediately can turn it off. And you will keep your... You, it's documented. We know that. That would directly suppress your immune system. We know that by not doing it, it'll directly increase your immune system and the whole battle with dealing with any chronically fermenting cell is the immune system we'll keep it gone or not that's it now you had the chemo and radiation at first in 2004 so then it, ca it came back i guess you know, I mean, it, it never went away. Remember, remember these things don't, they don't, it's not like they go away when they do chemo and radiation. All they've done is gotten rid of the, the mature ones. But all of the cancer stem cells, as they're called, and the, um, are still there. And they just, they need time to grow. If we don't feed them, like if you don't put, if you put seeds in the ground, but you don't put any water at all, and you don't let it rain, you hide it from the rain, they're not going to grow. So you can't water them. So we have got to take a look at your life. So so, so you got a little spot on your, on your rib. I understand that. There's a lot of things you can be doing. Eating right. All these things, if you're doing them, iodine, melatonin, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, these are essential, essential. Going to sleep early, movement. Meditation, 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 not thinking. Uh, do you have parasites? Have you gone on a parasite cleanse? Have you taken gone to a biological dentist, a real biological dentist, to evaluate whether or not you have any potentially hidden dental problems that are fueling this? Because that's what you got to do. And if you do all that, you've got... you. you Get rid of all that. And then the other thing is environmental toxins. Are you being exposed to anything? You can take uh, cell core puts out a binder, something called a uh, cell core binder. You just take one pill twice a day or a couple times a day, uh, two pills a couple times a day. Uh, it just binds up. And the good thing about the cell core is that it doesn't um, it doesn't um, take out the good healthy guys. It doesn't it doesn't take away your healthy minerals. Um, but yeah, so much you can do. Huh. Good, good uh, question here by Lynn. She's saying, what are, what are some signs that things are working? For example, if someone is eating raw, whole foods, going to bed early, taking recommended supplements, getting ozone, vitamin C infusion, grounding, rebounding, exercising, meditating, etc. What are some indications that the chronically fermenting cells are turning off? Well, okay, really depends on your situation. If you have a tumor that you can see or feel, that's easy to know. If you don't, um, 
and you have no symptoms from it, then you can't tell by subjective, sub subjectively evaluating it. Uh, then you would need an objective evaluation. And an objective evaluation, uh, there are different kinds of uh, <clears throat> blood tests that are helpful that just point to the fact that things are going in uh, their uh, chronically fermenting cells are at work, like LDH. You don't want that to be high. You get your ferritin and iron and make sure the ferritin to iron ratio is below five to one. Uh, you look at your uh, neutrophil to lymphocyte ra uh, ratio, right? You don't want that to be really high. You don't want that to be above three to five. You can also, there's a place called the American Biological Labs, and they have a whole test with looking at urinary HCG, looking at a whole list of things, including one called PHI, which is phosphohexoisomerase, which is an enzyme that is in the fermentative pathway that allows uh, hexose to go to fructose. Um, and so if that's up, it correlates very high with cancer activity. Now, as long as it's under 100, it's easy, it can be dealt with. When it gets above that, it becomes very, very difficult. And you, 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 the way you're talking, there's just like no way, no way. But if it's up a little bit, if you, you should get that. Get the PHI test. You don't have to get the whole, you don't have to get the whole battery out. It doesn't matter. I don't think so. But get the pH because then you, yeah, just get the PHI test and, and watch and watch that. That's a good way to to monitor. Okay, phosphohexoisomerase. It's the American Biological Labs. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'd say if you're meditating, do it more. I think none of us meditate enough. Um. All right, so uh, Elizabeth, I was says uh, I was introduced just, just introduced to your work last week. Thank you for your your welcome, my pleasure. Thanks to your email crew, I just received episode forty seven and went directly to on hydrogen peroxide. Quite unfortunately, a little recklessly, I have been ingesting hydrogen peroxide while also supplementing my largely vegetarian diet with liver plus. Does iron, yeah. Ah, okay. I understand. And listen, yeah, okay. I, that that could have been damaged through the through the Fenton reaction. Uh, an experiment with ways to eliminate possible synthetic parasites and nanotechnology, etc. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, all right. Uh, all right. So what I know about uh, synthetic biology and uh, nanoparasites and stuff like that, that, things that don't exist. I mean that. Uh, they're being given to us um, is they stop moving they feed off uh, EMF so when you're when you got no EMF around they can't move if you're in a Faraday cage they can't move they can't live they don't live I'm talking about the synthetic biology we're talking about the uh, graphene oxide and the hydrogel and things like that um, as far as your Fenton reaction, all that. Whatever's happened has happened. However, so remember, what will quench the Fenton reaction would be more electrons, so more vitamin C. So be sure you're taking enough vitamin C. Be sure you're taking enough vitamin A, D, and C. All right? So A, you're going to take 40,000 units a day. Vitamin D, you're going to take 30,000 units a day. You'll check your levels in about a month or two, and you want them both to be up around 100. That's about a good number. Um, and then uh, you look uh, and you do your vitamin C, you take eight grams, put it in a liter of water, pure sodium ascorbate water, put it in a liter of water, shake it up and sip it slowly from seven to seven. So because each slip will be will be small enough for you to be able to absorb. All right. So. Um, That's all. So, so you're doing, you know, you're doing great. So whatever happened, happened. And it's going to click, you know, it won't keep happening. It won't get it happened. When it happened, it happened. Okay. Uh, and your, your body, 
your body's amazing. It probably repaired everything that you did because you're doing everything else so good. So I wouldn't worry about that. I just wouldn't do it again. And get all these antioxidants, which are electron donors, to prevent, you know, it's not going to happen again because you're not drinking peroxide. But that's the only thing I wouldn't do with peroxide. Otherwise, if you can get 0.03% as an IV, if you can get, it's really good. Take a bath in it. It's good for your skin. Yeah. Cleans your vegetables really nicely. So let's go here. Come on, you guys over here. Got some other Instagram questions. After two can <clears throat> after two cancers, breast and lung, what is my first step to heal my immune system? Well, first of all, you when you say two cancers, you mean you had a breast cancer that started in your breast and a lung cancer that started in your lung, or it's a breast went to your lung. Usually, it's much more rare for people to have um, two primaries, like you know, a colon and a pancreatic cancer or a breast and a lung cancer. That's really uncommon. What's more common is that one of them went there and you have one that's metastatic. Okay, so if that, what, what is the first thing you do to, to heal your immune system is, well, you've stopped doing all your, all drugs and chemos and you clean your colon you do a juice fast you get yourself make yourself celery cucumber kale spinach ginger and apple okay as a foundation you can play with it if you want if you don't like apple and you want to put in a couple carrots that's fine you just want to give it enough flavor so that you enjoy it you got to love it but you don't want to make it too sweet drink three four five liters a day and do this for as long as you can three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever, okay? As long as you can, you feel better and better and more and more energy. That will be it. Go get some colon hydrotherapy. Remember, 60% of your lymphatic tissue is in your GI tract. So by cleaning out your GI tract, you allow your lymphatic tissue to have a break. Very important. Um, and... Uh, Make sure your dental situation is okay. Go to a biological dentist. Get, do parasite plans. If you haven't done parasite plans, do parasite plans. Because if we have parasites anywhere or dental, hidden dental issues anywhere, they are overtaxing, overwhelming our immune systems. That's what they do. And that's what happens. That's one of the ways that they're, and they can, they can, they can subvert our immune system and all kinds of stuff. And then if you're over 40, you might look into getting a, um, or even not, younger than 40 is fine. Go to Peptide Sciences and get thymus and alpha-1, which is an injectable um, thymus. Uh, injectable. Uh, way to stimulate your thymus. Because your, your thymus gland shrinks and shrinks and shrinks as, with every decade of age. And the thymus gland underneath your chest bone is where your um, T cells are made. And we need T cells for immunity. That's what immunity is. <clears throat> We're talking about immunity, so it's very important. So I would get thymus and alpha one. The other thing you could do is you can eat uh, mushrooms. There are many amazing ones: turkey tail, uh, maitake, shiitake, um, agaricus blasii. Some really amazing mushrooms. Find yourself a good supplier, organic, and use them. They're very good. How can I come to your place and learn? Well, what I'm going to do is, uh, it's uh, as soon as I, sorry, get around to it, uh, is, is put some courses up online and and have different for people want to become health health uh, coaches. And get, train you and certify you to become health coaches. And uh, it'll probably, most of it will be online, but there'll be a period where you come just so you get the knowledge. And then a period where you come and spend time at the clinic. And we'll have one of three or four clinics that you can come to, spend time, and get some actual real learning. Okay, so that's a good question. And do that for different. 
and, and for different people. Some people want to be a health coach for themselves. Some people want to be a health coach for others. And some people want to be a health coach that helps health coaches, keep, organizes them. Can I do high-dose vitamin C with a blood thinner? Yes. A blood thinner, you mean something like uh, Lovenox or uh, heparin or something like that. Lovenox is just low molecular weight heparin. Yeah, sure. No problem. What is your opinion on restricting methionine to, st to starve chronically fermenting cells? Well, you know, that's a good question. You know, methionine, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, so they, they use more of it than we do. And yet we need it. Without them, we can't do perform vital functions. It's kind of like glutamine. I don't think restricting anything is going to help because... You know, methionine is a is a um, is what you call an essential amino acid. In other words, if you don't eat it, you won't make it. Whereas glutamine is non-essential, meaning as long as you're getting your essential amino acids, you're able to make glutamine. Now, glutamine is not only a fuel for cancer; it serves as the nitrogen and carbon backbones for the cancer cells to or the chronically fermenting cells to make uh, amino acids, to make uh, nucleotides, uh, you know, DNA and stuff like that. In other words, really, really important. And the carbon to make fatty acids and stuff like that. And yeah, they also make more cholesterol than us. So that's why some of the um, repurposed drugs, they put people on, on cholesterol medication. But, you know, th there's too many side effects from that. I don't agree with that at all. Uh, and methionine, you can do it, but that means no nuts. And without nuts, you know how you're going to get your oils. And without, if you don't get your oils, you won't, can't get the cellular voltage up to where it needs to be to heal. And you've got to have a cellular voltage of at least 70 intracellular to heal. And that only happens when you have really strong uh, lipids, fats in your cell membrane. And that comes from eating nuts and seeds. So that's the, so, and if you got rid of the methionine, that, that's not, you know, experimentally that works. But like, just like you can't get rid, you can go on a ketogenic diet and your body will switch from glucose to eating glutamine. So if you go on a water diet, which is a fast, yeah, now you won't have any glutamine or uh, glucose. And that actually for 40, 40, 41 days works. However, remember something, your body will still be making glutamine and still be making glucose to the rates that it needs for certain things because it's absolutely essential that goes into the Krebs cycle that makes different biological parts that we need. And eventually, yeah, I told you, eventually you, uh, you, you, you die if you don't eat, eventually. Um, so I don't think restricting any particular thing helps. What I think is better is getting rid of any sources of chronic inflammation because chronic inflammation is what underlies all degenerative conditions that we call that are called not we but that they call diseases okay that's what, okay that's what it is so by getting how do you get rid of chronically uh, 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 uh chronic uh inflammation you eat food that's not inflammatory food that's not inflammatory is food that's not cooked food that's cooked is inflamed causes inflammation because it's seen by the body as an as a, a foreign body, number one. Number two, you avoid stresses. You meditate. You, you go to sleep early. You get exercise. All the things we talk about. Avoid toxins and poisons. All right. Anyway, you guys, I lost, we lost TikTok. Maybe for good this time. They probably kicked us off. They don't like us now. And I didn't say. I don't know what I said. Do you, anybody know what I said? Any, anything, anybody know what I said? Hi there. Uh, I don't know what I said. It would kick us off. Anyway. So, anyway, I got to go. It's uh, 9 o'clock here, nine, after 9 here. Okay, you guys. So, what do you Aloha. Namaste. Namaskar. 
Have a wonderful week, you guys, or, and good night to you all. Thank you for joining me. Um, 